Are talking about the travesty that it has occurred against Schumacher Furs downtown Portland. This is a company that has been in business for 112 years down there doing um, business in our great city and the city has let them down in the biggest way I've ever heard of. It's, it's absolutely atrocious. We've actually got on the phone with us right now Greg Schumacher, the owner of Schumacher Furs, and he's going to tell us a little bit about it. Greg, are you there? Yes, I am. Greg, tell us, when did this happen? How, how did this happen? What has happened to your business? Well, going back uh, November 2nd of 2005, uh, I opened up my new store uh, in downtown Portland, and uh, within about a week and a half after that, uh, we started started getting protested and we've been protested every Saturday since that, that date um, which is you know about 18 over over 18 months straight and sometimes on a daily basis now where is your where's your store was it located and then where is it located now well it was on uh, 10th and Yam Hill and then we moved around the corner two blocks away to 9th and Morrison oh and is that very close to the infamous light rail <laughs> yeah, yes, right on it. <laughs> oh, baby. Good and bad for, points for that, isn't that, right? Right, yeah. You can ride that free if you're just riding downtown, isn't that right? Uh, to my understanding, that's true, yeah. Yeah, maybe that encouraged some of this situation because that seems odd that you got, you, you really had very little protesting or, or any protesting at all at your old location? Uh, you know, occasionally we would, once or twice a year. Uh, I think it's be one of the reasons we became quite more visible uh, in the marketplace with our advertising campaign, uh, our new store. Uh, we diversified our product line into uh, not just furs, but also outerwear items, you know, like cashmere, leather, and also men's items. Oh. Um, so you, between the marketing and the beautiful new store and the new location, uh, we just were, were an aggressive company, and uh, I think the, the, uh, us being more visible uh, made a difference, and they started protesting us. And, and, and it was the same. Has it been the same group all along, or has it been a variety? We're going to watch some of the video, that the horrific video that uh, we saw at the press conference mm -hmm. here a little bit later. But do you do you get the impression it's the same basic people all along? Well, yeah. I mean, there's a there's a core group of the same people, and there's, uh, if I may, uh, intervals of different people that protest throughout this last 18 months. Uh, but uh, in defense of animals is one group. The other group is PETA, and then we have uh, Animal Liberation Front out there, and uh, and some anarchist type people. Uh, so it it does vary a little. Bit. Okay, now you are you an animal lover, Craig? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm an animal lover too. It, it it's offensive to animal lovers like ourselves to have somebody take this. These are basically terrorists, I think to take this to an extreme. So you got these, you, the first time they showed up to protest at your store, you uh, probably called the police, am I right? Well, what, you know, I'm, there's a First Amendment right, which is, uh, you know, expression of uh, freedom of speech, which is fine, but when they started uh, doing any type of criminal activity uh, or breaking any laws, on the, uh, yes, at that time I'd call the police, the non-emergency line, and request uh, uh, some help. For, for, for disturbing the peace? What, well, what? Well, disturbing the peace, disorderly conduct, menacing, uh, trespassing. I mean, we've had you know, paint thrown on the building. Uh, our customers are stalked. Uh, you know, uh, many times they block the entrance of the building. So it's just been a total disruption uh, ever since it started. So you called the police when that happened, and what was their response in downtown Portland? Well, I mean, over the over this whole period of time of the protest, we've called the police numerous times, um, uh, and they've actually, in many cases, uh, had police just right across the street for the, especially on Saturdays, uh, which are our heavily protested day. Um, their response has basically been nothing. Um, uh, many times we'd call the police. Um, and they'd say they're sending an officer up, and no officer would show up. Or an officer would show up, and they'd come up maybe an hour, hour and a half later, 
uh, after an incident had happened, we'd ask to file a report, and they wouldn't file a report. And they uh, basically say that they could not do anything about the situation. Uh huh. And so, uh, you know, that's got to be infuriating. Did you did you try to hire your own um, your own private uh, uh, security force? Well, or actually, we did. Yeah. Guys? I mean, we started. We hired our own security, uh -huh. and uh, we've had we've had to pay for that, of course. Um, and we've had security out there pretty much. Uh, uh, since the beginning stages of the protest. And that didn't clear it away. They'd still... They'd well, still. even, uh, you know, the, one of the problems that we had also is that our security, if they saw an incident happening out there that was uh, illegal, um, they would uh, many times ask us to call the police for backup if they thought things were getting out of control. And even in situations like that, we couldn't get police response. Oh, my gosh. So as bizarre as that may sound. That's amazing. So they had nobody to back you up. So I, I would imagine that would put your security team in a precarious position by not having anybody to back them up. Uh, you know, it's like yeah, saying, it, you, uh, you better do this or, or else. There's nowhere else. Right, right. And so, yes, it does. It, it makes security feel uncomfortable. And uh, we, have, we do have professional security. Uh, they're trained. And they've really actually never been in a situation like this uh, from what they've explained to me. So this is all. This is all culminated in forcing you to 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 go out of business. I understand. Right. I mean, what's what, what what's happened is, generally speaking, is after these uh, year and a half of protests, which are out of control, um, it's it's uh, intimidated uh, people from coming into the store. Many times, they just physically could not get through the door. Uh, for a, so I actually attempted to move the store about five months ago to a private mall setting. Um, and uh, I actually tried four different malls and actually got acceptance uh, or intentions that they wanted us. Uh -huh. And uh, we kind of got invited and then uninvited. Uh, the protesters did some uh, email campaigns to the mall owners and oh, the management. My saying that they were going to protest if they let Schumacher in, and so that discouraged the landlords from leasing to us. So basically the situation as of today is we still get protested, um, there's still criminal activity going on, and we cannot move forced the to store. Go. So you're forced to move out. We're forced to move out. I mean, because, we're just I mean, corner, so that's where we're going out of business. Uh, you know, our yeah, family's been your... in business for uh, 112 years. That is such a crime. That is... That's just the worst. I it can't is. believe this. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, it's, so how long ago did you, did you, did you re realize that you weren't going to be able to get a new spot to relocate your store? You weren't going to be able to um, do business. You hadn't been able to do business in downtown Portland for all this time. And you were going to actually have to close down your business after it was 112 years. Is that what it is? Well, our family's been in the business for Your family's been in it. Uh, well, yeah, well, I'd hope that you don't have your 112-year-old grandfather. <laughs> I, I'm a fourth-generation furrier. That is amazing. That is amazing. What a wonderful tradition for your family, and to have it smashed like this. And, and well, it sounds I, made, I made the decision uh, in February uh, after I realized that I had exhausted all the alternatives as far as moving the store. And once I came to that realization and came to the realization that um, this protest situation is not going to end, um, that's what, when I made the decision to, uh, to close. That's so sad. That's so sad. I'm sure you, did you contact any of the, um, the bosses of the policemen? We, my wife and I actually uh, went to the city council meeting in front of the mayor and uh, the city commissioners. Uh, we uh, contacted... Uh, 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 the commander, the chief of police, uh, we contacted the governor of the state, um, we contacted the U.S. Marshal's office, U.S. Attorney's office, city attorney's office, um, any, we reached out to any uh, government agency that we could to try to get the uh, local, state, and federal laws enforced. And um, no one seemed to be able to uh, come to our rescue. I, the mayor, I believe, is commissioner of the police department, so it probably stems from there. And uh, I don't really have an explanation of exactly why the police department uh, has responded 
or not responded, if I may, uh, in the manner that they have. This, this is atrocious that this has happened to you, and I and I. Um, so you're real busy today, aren't you? I'll yeah, bet. we are. We are swamped. I mean, we've got this uh, going out of business sale going on, where we're offering. Uh, you know, up to 65% off, everything's at least 50% off. Oh, yeah, you got to do that because you got to get it moved out. When yeah, are you we got to get the goods moved out. When are you out? supposed to be moved out of the uh, building? Uh, we're, we're supposed to be out by May 31st. Oh, wow. And the, the sale that we're doing, we're just kind of uh, at the tail end of it. Uh, we're, we're kind of playing it by ear as far as uh, from w one week to the next. But um, as long on. as we're busy, we'll, we'll, we'll stay here until we can. All right. Well, I don't want to take up any more time from you and um, working hard down there at Schumacher Furs and uh, trying to liquidate your inventory like this. And I'm really sorry, and my condolences goes out to you and Linda Schumacher hey, for the horrible way you've been treated by our community, and I, pre and I appreciate you coming on the show. Well, thank you.